Hello world and welcome back to another immersive engineering tutorial where we're going to be covering all everything you can do with crude oil. Starting off we actually need to know how to get crude oil and that is by using the pump jack. The pump jack is created using steel sheet metal, blocks of steel, steel scaffolding, heavy engineering blocks, fluid pipes, light engineering blocks, redstone engineering blocks and treated wood fences. The pump jack is created just like so in order to activate it you have to hit the heavy engineering block between the light engineering block and the redstone engineering block. A couple of things to go over with the pump jack we have our redstone power point here on the back where you can place a lever we have our power point on the top here we have uh, on the back here a lubricant thing but that is for something later in the video not standard with the, the pump jack and then we have two exports on the side here for any types of fluid that this can pump up. Now placing this into the world, it may not necessarily start pumping things right away. First, you are going to need to get a ore core sampler. Now this thing we have used before in our export video and it's used making these little sample things that we have around the world here. So if you place this down, press F3 and G, we can see all our chunk borders. This is a Minecraft ex um, default thing in vanilla. Power this up and we right click on it, it will give us a sample. Once it's finished, we'll right click on it again, it'll give us this sample. In this chunk here, we have got absolutely no fluid reservoirs. As the pump jack doesn't actually pump things out of the ground, it only pumps things in a given reservoir. So if you right click on this again, it's going to give us this same core sample here, being the cinnabar, but nothing in the world. And just as a quick tip, you can shift right click them into the world so you don't have to keep them in your inventory somewhere and remember where they are, despite the coordinates that are given to you. So the pump jack finds these reservoirs and it can pump up three different types of materials. One being water, which we have here, one being lava and one being crude oil. Now, despite the fact that it's in this chunk and that there is nothing in this chunk, because it's got one square into the next chunk over that does have, want have water, it is still pumping water. So it's not some strange bug. I don't have a special one. It's not pumping water out of somewhere else. It wasn't until I had to get three chunks over that it actually started getting crude oil sources. So you definitely have to find the right chunk you want to pump out of first. The crude oil has now been acquired, so let's try and do something with it. And that is where this distillery tower gets involved. It's the biggest thing we've made so far inside of immersive engineering, and it's going to require steel scaffolding, steel scaffolding slabs, iron sheet metal, light engineering blocks, heavy engineering blocks, redstone engineering blocks, and fluid pipe. Now something to note, when you are using the steel scaffolding slabs, they have to be this sort of walkway one, it can't be the default, so you have to make your regular steel into this other steel scaffolding. It's very confusing, I don't know why, but just remember you need to use this extra step and then you have to uh, make your slabs using this other decor steel slab. Now here is the distillery tower and just to show you what I mean, if I take out of this slab here and place this one in, the way you actually activate this by right clicking the redstone block as you can see i'm right clicking here and it is not working however when i use the one you're meant to it does actually work and works straight away looking at the distillery tower there are a couple of different inputs and outputs we have on this on the back we have our input indicated by the blue we've got a creative mechanism tank just pumping in crude oil but this is where you of course you have to hook in your pump jack Next on top of here, we have got our power source. This is the only power source. Just use any power. We're using creative power, of course. And then on the front here, we've got our lever where we can turn this machine off or on again. There are actually two outputs on this. One is for solids being on the front here on the back side of this chest. It's not indicated by an orange, but this black hole is going to be for your byproduct of bitumen. We're not going to be covering all the things you can do with bitumen today. Uh, that'll be in the next episode. So stay notified for that. On the side here, we also have another output. This is for our fluids. Taking a look inside, we have got our GUI. We've got our fuel, res our crude oil reservoir in here, and then our outputs. Our outputs are gasoline, sulfurized diesel, and lubricant. On the left here, we have our input and output of crude oil, if you so wish. And on the right, you can bucket out each of these different pieces, if you so wish. You can't change the order of this like you can with other mods, and you will take out, if you're using a bucket, the top fluid first, being lubricant, then sulfurized diesel, then gasoline. Then on the side, we have our power. This is where we're going to be wanting to use our immersive engineering fluid pipes. As we know, fluid pipes can actually take three different types of fluids out at the same time, which is a lot better than mechanism. So over on the side here, we've got our pipe going directly underneath the ground into these three different pipes here that have just a little bit of each inside. Place this down and now all three are being filled up at the same time. Very, very powerful. And you are going to get gasoline the most out of this, so expect a backup of that the most. 
As I say, we're gonna be covering only the fluids of this first, not bitumen. So let's go over gasoline first. The first item that's gonna use gasoline is the portable generator. In order to make the portable generator, you're gonna need generator blocks. This is a vanilla immersive engineering block. This is gonna require a kinetic dynamo, four steel sheet metals and four electrum plates. This is gonna give you four generator blocks in total. Now, in order to make the portable generator, which is part of immersive petroleum, this is gonna require one generator block, an LV capacitor and seven iron plates and you'll get one of these in total. The portable generator is exactly what it's meant to be, portable. So everything inside of here, everything you do with it will actually keep its contents inside. If you take a bucket of gasoline, you can right click on the inside of it and it will actually place, but uh, it's already full for me. Um, you can only hold 8,000 ml buckets of gasoline in it in total. Now it must have an output already hooked up to it um, in order for it to generate more power. Mine's already backed up on power, which is why it's not creating anything. Inside it can hold an internal buffer of 100,000 RF and uh, as I say when you break it and move it in survival mode you will keep your buckets of gasoline inside and the amount of power is generated. As well as that on this black dot on the top you can pipe in other uh, your gasoline as you see here. Obviously we are full. The portable generator can make 256 RF per tick so it's very very handy to move on and in order to get things out of this power that is how to get power out of this is you use this little orange knob right here. This can actually take out power in either MV or LV power not HV and you also do not have to have a connector on the side of it in order for it to connect. So here we're using an MV capacitor with an MV wire, we take an MV cable and we can connect it straight to the dot and it will work right away as you hear there. Lastly, just to demonstrate, we're going to take our bucket of gasoline and just right click it on the inside as you see there. Moving on, the next thing you can use for gasoline is actually the motorboat. The motorboat has many upgrades, but let's cover how we actually create it first. That being the light engineering block, iron mechanical components and four treated wood planks. This will give us one motorboat. Now, the motorboat itself works the same as any other boat, except that it needs obviously gasoline to fuel. You right click it down and when you get inside, you will see on the bottom left hand or the bottom right hand side there, we've got no fuel and this will not move anywhere. You have to take it out and you can use either a jerry can or a bucket of gasoline to right click on the inside and then you'll get your gasoline. By default, the motorboat can hold 8,000 ml buckets of gasoline. Then you can use it as normal. Everything about this is pretty much the same as a regular boat, except uh, it's uh, a little bit worse at turning, but however, I believe it's a little bit faster. Time for all the upgrades. Just like the uh, mining drill and the buzzsaw, all of these upgrades can be applied inside the engineer's workbench. But starting off, we have got the expanded fuel tank. This is made using a metal barrel and four iron plates, and this is going to double your maximum fuel capacity of your boat, taking it to 16,000. Next, we have got our maneuvering rudders. This is going to require two iron rods and six iron plates. And as this says, this allows you to turn a lot faster inside of your boat, so it's less cumbersome to actually move around. Following that, we have the icebreaker bow. The icebreaker bow is using one steel block, four steel plates and two steel ingots. And this is going to allow you to smash through ice and also damage mobs that are in your way. So say you're in an icy biome with a load of glaciers, you can just run straight through those with this icebreaker bow. Next up, we have the reinforced hull. This is going to require one block of steel and four steel plates, and this is going to allow your boat to actually work in lava, meaning you can now use this in the nether to traverse all those big lava lakes. And lastly, we have the emergency rudders. This requires four treated wood sticks and two treated wood planks, and this allows you to use your boat without the need of fuel. And this also does work in the nether, despite it actually being wood. Going into the engineer's workbench now, we're going to place our boat inside of here. I'm actually going to get a spare boat. We're going to put in our expanded capacity. We're going to put in our emergency paddles and we're going to put in our maneuvering rudders, which I've forgotten. There we go. We've got our emergency rudders there and let's take our regular boat for comparison. Paint down the regular boat first and then we're going to place our other one. We can see we have a visual representation of our different boats, although there is no different change in the GUI. We have our little uh, cylinder on the side here. This is going to allow us to hold our 16,000 millibuckets of uh, fuel. On the back here, we've got a couple of extra rudders to allow us turning. And then obviously we have our oars. Going inside of here, while there's no fuel inside, we're going to demonstrate how we can use this without fuel, of course. Then if we go out and we take our bucket of gasoline, we can fill this up all the way to 16 millibuckets. Now, just as a quick test, let's park this back up. This is the best that I can get it. I suck at driving. And let's just demonstrate how this goes. So when we turn, let's go over to this block here and then let's turn around quite sharp and we end up pretty much straight in line over here. 
we try it with the regular boat let's just give it a bit of gasoline here get inside and we do the exact same turn at the exact same point as we can see we are in a lot wider angle to do our u-turns so you get a lot tighter with the rudders to show off our last two let's have the icebreaker bow and the reinforced hull take this over here and i've placed down a little bit of ice go over here place this down we can see another visual representation with the bow being on the front as these large steel plates and also the base is reinforced of course give this a bit of a bit of a gasoline here and we're off to start smashing some ice now you do not actually need any sort of run up for this, it's just that it, the hitbox of this is a little bit finicky as you see here. Instead of it being straight on the front, you sort of have to hit the ice with the sides itself. It's a little bit annoying, I wish it broke from the centre, but that doesn't seem to be the case. But again, you don't need to have any sort of um, run up, you can just simply smash straight into it and it will start breaking away. Sometimes it's a little bit broken though, as you can see here. Now, as I say, this can also harm mobs. So if we go to the squid, we can actually see we've damaged it there. It did flash up very slightly and you can kill mobs. So if you want to fish anything, that's probably the best way of doing this. I don't see anyone being able to make some sort of barb with this. Moving on to the nether now, we can see that over here we have got our boat in the nether and we have no fuel in this, but yet we can still use our rudders. And also just to show off with our bow, we can also hit these striders. And as you can see, we don't need any sort of run up or extreme power as we can just do this without fuel, of course. That's all for gasoline. Let's now move on to lubrication. There are two forms of lubrication in this game being the lubricant can or the automatic lubricator. Now the lubrication can be done with either lubricant itself from the distillery tower or you can actually do this from plant oil using the squeezer. Click the video on the cards now to check out that video. Now in order to actually lubricate things manually we're going to need the lubricant can as I say. This is going to require a red dye and two iron plates and a bucket and this will give you just one lubricant can in order for me to show off this can i am going to have to be in survival mode which is a little bit annoying now in order to actually fill up the lubricant can by default there is nothing in it you just want to right click on any tank that has some lubricant in it this gives you eight thousand buckets you can also place it black back into a tank if you so wish now you can only actually lubricate three different items and this is added by immersive petroleum that is the pump jack which you showed off earlier the excavator and a crusher now, in my game, for whatever reason, you, I can't see a manual application uh, visual representation, but when you are applying your lubricant, apparently you will be able to see drips coming from your machines while they are working. In order to apply, you just want to look at any block on your a uh, that you've created, in our case the pump jack, simply right click on it and it will take out 300 millibuckets as you can see here, and now this is lubricated. As I say, this works on both the excavator and the crusher, as well as that, what this actually does is give you a 1.25 speed on your items. So we can do it on the excavator, as you can see here. And then we can also do it on our crusher, which we made a couple of episodes ago also. Now, I can't find any documentation to see how long lubrication actually lasts, which is why it's a little bit annoying when you can't see your, um, your drips coming from anywhere, which is where the automatic lubricator comes in. This is going to require three glass blocks, two treated wooden planks and some fluid pipe. You only get one of these, of course, and the lubricator will actually show you where you can place these on these blocks and it won't work on any others. So if we go over here where I've already got a lubricator, if I actually remove these blocks here and then hold our lubricator, you can see that a little ghost image actually comes up. And this is on the same for both our excavator and the crusher. It will show a ghost of where they need to be placed. Now, when placing this down, you want to face directly ahead of it, as obviously there are two of these little prong type things and you need to place this in the right configuration. Place it sideways on the ghost, it does not work. Just by example, if we look here, we need to have our prongs facing it. If I place it here, nothing actually attaches. If I place it facing the right way, we can see that these other lines start coming into our machine and things are working again. So let's apply our oil here it can only be pumped in through the top as you can see here so let's apply some oil then let's give this a tank so it actually works and after some time there is actually going to be some drips coming down off our pump jack and there we go on the back here we've got a little bit of dripping coming from the end of these two pipes now i don't know why it is but for me on our excavator there are these pipes as well but i am not getting any of these jip drips as well as the crusher now the drips only come when things are being worked but for whatever reason i am not getting these on these two machines and that is everything when it comes to lubricant it only works on those three machines and again i said you can use plant oil if you so wish 
So now let's move on to the sulfurized diesel. To demonstrate the diesel, we are going to be using this on a diesel engine, but just like with biodiesel, you can obviously use the biodiesel on the diesel engine, but you can also use sulfurized diesel on our mining drills or buzz saws if you so wish. Now in order to make the diesel engine you're going to require a heavy engineering block, a radiator block, sk steel scaffolding, redstone engineering blocks, ra generator blocks from earlier and fluid pipe. In order to make these radiator blocks you're going to require four steel sheet metal, four copper plates and one water bucket and you get four of these per craft. The diesel generator is crafted quite so, it's by 4x3x3 by three by three area. In order to make it actually form, you have to do the center generator block on the front here. Now, looking at the diesel generator, there are a couple of things to note. There is only inputs on this and no outputs. No, like, fluid outputs or byproduct outputs. They are the inputs on the side here. This can only take in any form of diesel, biodiesel, sulfurized diesel, or regular diesel, which we won't be covering today. And then there I've got three of our power output points on the top here. Now, the diesel generator itself will not actually craft any power until there is an output on top of it. There is no interface on this when right clicking and it has no internal buffer. This will generate up to 4096 RF per tick. However, if you want to split each of these three different points, so I'm going to place this on now, it's going to be a pretty loud. We're going to right click this on here and then actually change our output, our input side to the other side. And you can see it got pretty loud. And what's happening is the output is now being placed between all three of these. So it's 4096 divided by three gives us our each individual outputs but if we want to all just run this off one then all 4096 is running into this hv capacitor you don't have to have hv on this although obviously it will supply hv because 4096 is a high voltage uh, voltage but you can put a low lv capacitor or mv capacitor on this if you so wish as well as that turning it taking it off you can put connectors directly onto this and send it to maybe a power bank or the rest of your base if you so wish now as i say there is a way of actually making this sulfur a little bit more pure the diesel a little bit more pure and that's by desulfurizing this sulfur diesel however that is going to be using a slightly different machine which we're going to be showing off in the next tutorial so if this video helped you out in any way shape or form please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe it will really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when that desulfurization episode comes out as well as that we're going to be showing off a little bit of the mixer in that episode but if you want to know more about how to get things out of the ground similar to the reservoir i.e being the ores you can get out of the ground then click the excavator video on screen now to learn how to do that but until next time guys take care